Good afternoon. This is the first round of tutorials for how to create parallel curve string art using paper in a classroom setting. By now your students should have some type of design finalized. It's been checked off by the teacher. It looks good. There's nothing glaringly wrong with it. It's a great design. First step, you're going to need a piece of cardstock. It's kind of like construction paper. It comes in great colors, but it's thicker or heavier than what construction paper would be. We're going to glue our design to our cardstock. Try and center your design. Press it down really, really, really well. If your design is larger than your paper, or if it's not quite centered, that's okay. With nothing more than a pair of scissors, we can fix that quite easily. I would wait to cut it down to size after you've glued it down because once it's glued down, we can cut it to the perfect size. If we try to cut beforehand, it might be a little bit difficult. Now, in case if you've never worked with needle and thread before, in case if you've never tried to stitch through cardstock before, it can be somewhat of a challenge because cardstock is fairly thick and the ends of needles not the pointy ends, the ends, the eye of the needle, those can actually be fairly sharp. So your next step, once you've glued down your great design, will be to get a thumbtack. We're gonna use just a normal old thumbtack and punch holes anywhere where a line begins, anywhere where a line ends. If you laid this out using a grid, you should already have tons and tons of little dots. Everywhere where there's a dot, that's an area where we're going to punch a hole all the way through our cardstock. This part takes some time, doesn't take as long as doing the curve stitching itself, but it does take some time. And if you wonder whether or not you skipped one, if you turn your paper over, you should be able to tell that these are even, these are even, these are even, and then all of a sudden, these two are much farther apart. So I must have skipped one. That's no good. I'll figure out where it is, and I'll go back in, and I'll get that little hole. The reason why we're punching holes is so that you don't have to try and do it with your needle when the thread's already attached. Punching a hole through here with a needle can be difficult because both ends of the needle can be sharp. All right, by now, your pattern has been glued to the back of a piece of cardstock. You've, with a push pin, you've punched holes everywhere where a line starts and ends. So all of your points have been pushed through with a push pin. It's now time to select the color thread you want to use and we're gonna have to use a needle. Once you select the color thread you want to use, if I were you, I would write down the number that's on the sleeve that holds the skein of thread together. My number is 00171. That way, if I happen to run out of thread, I'll be able to purchase more thread that's the exact same color. The needles we're using for this, since it's a classroom setting, are called craft needles. Here we go. Craft needles. Craft needles are slightly different than normal sewing needles because the ends, the point ends, are a little bit more blunt than what a sewing needle would be. There's just a tiny bit of anatomy to a needle. There's a side with a hole, that's called the eye of the needle. There's a side with a point, that's your point. And then you have the shaft, the middle part. Your thread is going to go through the eye of the needle and that's how we do it. 
to thread your needle, that's what it's called when you put the thread through, threading your needle. To thread your needle, you can do it a few different ways. You can either use one of these, these little guys. It's a little thin piece of fragile metal with a little wire at the end. It's fairly easy to use. You stick your wire through the eye of the needle, stick your thread through the wire, and then pull your little wire back through the eye of the needle, just like that. If you don't have a needle threader, which is what these little guys are called, that's okay. It can be done a different way. Since this is embroidery thread, it's a good medium weight thread. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, but because it's not too thin, it is a little bit thick. Embroidery thread is made up of 12 individual threads. These 12 threads are gathered and twisted by twos. So inside, if you take apart embroidery thread, you should be able to get six little individuals about this big. And each one of these little individuals is made of two that are wound together. But we're using the whole thread this time just to make it easier. Right now, if I tried to thread this, it will not work very well because the end is kind of big. I need to do something to help flatten, straighten, and stiffen the end. So I'm going to put a little bit of spit on my finger and I'm going to rub my threads together. Yes, it's not the most sanitary thing in the world, but for some reason, spit does a really good job of making thread just a tiny bit more stiff than normal. It helps keep thread all going the same direction as well. Once it's been flattened out with just a teeny bit of it, we can thread it through the eye of our needle. Yep. Now, once you have it to this point, you're going to have a short end and a long end. Your short end, you want it to be about as long as your forearm. So if you hold your short end, pull your needle all the way back to your forearm. I'm doing that now. You can't see it because my forearm is off of the screen. Let me get this little bit of tangle undone. Wonderful. Okay, so now my short end is about as long as my forearm. Your long end, we're going to make that about as long as our arm. So if we hold our thread and needle in one hand and we hold our long end in the other, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my needle right at my shoulder and I'm going to pull this long end until it is as long as my outstretched arm. So I'm going to stretch this side of the thread. You got two sides, you got a short end over here and a long end. I'm going to stretch this thread until it is as long as my outstretched arm from my hand all the way back to my shoulder. Once you have that measured out, it should be roughly about twice as long as your short end. But once you have that measured out, we're just going to snip it. In case if you've never sewn before, it's very good to knot the end of your thread on your long end. There's two different ways to do this. The way that I used to do it, whenever I was a kid, I would take my thread, wrap it around my finger, grab hold of the loop, push the tail through the loop, and pull. That'll create just a nice little single knot right there at the end. There's a different kind of knot that you can use. It's hard to get the hang of, but once you get the hang of it, it actually can be just a tiny bit easier. I'm going to snip this off and show you. If you've never tried to make a quilter's knot before, it can be difficult if you've never tried. So if you mess up on your knot the first time, don't fret. It will be alright. The way you create a quilter's knot 
you're going to hold your needle and thread in one hand, your long end, you're going to lay it across your needle, and you're going to wrap it around your needle one, two, three times. You're going to hold on to these little wraps, and you're going to pull your needle and thread through those wraps. I'm going to pull it all the way through, and that should create a nice big fat knot right on the end. Looks pretty good. Now, since we're working with string art on cardstock, you need to know your next step. I've already done a little bit just so I could practice. The practice didn't go so well as you can see right here, but that's okay. I have a little bit of practice under my belt now, and I'm a little bit better off for it. You're going to go in from the back side through one of your holes. Looks like I need to go in through. I'm not sure which one to go in through. Hmm. I do believe. You know what? I won't make it that complicated for myself. I'll just go in over here. I'll go in through the back side and I'll pull until that knot catches on my paper. To make sure that this knot doesn't pull through before I do anything else, I'm going to grab a little piece of clear tape or any kind of tape really and I'm going to tape that tail down to the back of my pattern just to be sure because you know knots hold nine times out of ten. But that tenth time, when you pull just a little bit too hard and that knot pulls slap through your paper, it can be heartbreaking. So I do advise you to tape this down just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Now you've gone in through the back. We're on the front right now. We're going to come back up to the hole where this line ends. So let's see. I may have to flip them over just a little bit so I can see the hole. There we go. I'm going to come back up through the hole where this line ends. And then I'm going to move on to my next dot. I'll go down. And I'm going to come up into the hole where this line ends, all the way over here. I'm going to flip them over so I can see where the hole is. One bit of advice that I have for you. As you work, you're going to have a big loop of string on one side. Let's see, let me show you a little bit better. All of that is one big loop of string on one side. If I just leave it all looped up, it may want to tangle up on itself. So it's good if you can put a little bit of tension on the loop, keep your hand or something in it, so that way as you pull it through, it doesn't get knotted up onto itself. I'll go back down through the next hole and where that line ends that's where I'm going to come back up through. See I didn't keep tension on that and it got all knotted up. When that happens go about it gently. If you go about it gently chances are it may unknot itself. Once it's unknotted go ahead and put some tension in it. That means hold it just a little bit so that way it has no problem going through and it goes through without creating a knot. Sorry about the light folks. The light is on a motion sensor and if I sit at my desk for too long it thinks that there's no one in here and the lights turn off. Held on to my loop and pulled it through. I'm going to go through my next hole. Doing it this way saves thread. Since we're going to need thread to create this project, it makes sense to save thread. If we wanted to, yes, yeah, sure, we could come through there and then cut straight across and then do it all the way around the paper instead of just back and forth on one side of the paper. But if we go back and forth on one side, it saves so much thread. And that's good when thread is a hot commodity that everybody needs. 
I'm going to go through this just a little bit quicker so that I will have time to show you how to end it off. Tension. Tension. I always forget to put tension on it. I guess that's why I'm not very good at crocheting either. I forget about the tension. I don't pay attention to the tension. That's all right. This is just a demo. Go into the next hole. Come up to the next hole. Go down through the next hole. Tension. Come up through the next hole. Tension. Go down through the next hole. Wow, my camera's getting a little glitchy on me. Don't glitch up on me now. I still need you. I'm almost to the end of this parabolic curve. Just have about two more. All right, I think I'm done with that one. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. That's a pretty great parabolic curve right there. Got one on one side and one on the other. To finish one off, or if you need to change string, or if you run out of string and need to get more string, here's what you do. You're going to hold the string that's coming out of your paper with one hand. With your hand that has your needle, we're going to wrap our needle around this thread three times. So one, two, three. Now we're going to slide those loops down to the bottom of our needle. We're going to hold them close to our page and pull our needle thread through, all while holding those loops as close to the page as possible. That should end you with a little knot right there at your page. That looks pretty good. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to tape it. And then I'm going to move on to my next section. Don't forget to tape your ends. I promise you the one time that you forget to tape your end is going to be the time that that end is going to pull through. Sometimes it pulling through is not a big deal. Other times, if it pulls through and it's a very short end, it's hard to attach a needle to a short end and then try and do anything with it. Very difficult. Make sure that you tape your ends down. I would also write down your color number. So if you run out of thread, you'll be able to get more of that color without any problem. I'm going to keep going with my awesome pattern. I'll catch up with you when I'm done.